Hello, I'm trying to provide information to you related to the bacterial transformation lab we're going to conduct involving the p glow plasmid that contains the green fluorescent protein gene that you're going to introduce to bacteria. So follow along and I'll try to point out some things to help you along the way in your lab. I'm sure you've done a great job reading it so far, but there are some things that we definitely want to make, we, make sure we pay attention to. Uh, in the first step, uh, you in your tray, you're going to find you're going to have two uh, empty tubes that are open. Um, they are two different colors. One of those you're going to label plus p glow, and one of these you're going to label minus p glow, and then that's going to be your experimental tubes that you're going to be adding things to throughout the experiment. You'll also find you have a foam float with six holes in it. Two of them are going to be filled with two other tubes. One is going to have a microtubule that's labeled with TS. The TS stands for transformation solution. Uh, and you'll be adding it here in step number two. The other one contains a label that says LB. That's Luria Britanni. And that is the broth that we'll be adding later in the experiment. So you'll need these. Uh, in this step, you'll be adding in step two, 250 microliters. Now your micropipetter you're using can only measure a maximum of 200. So we're gonna set it on 125 and add it twice. So the micro, uh, excuse me, the micropipetter is what we're gonna use, but we're gonna add two additions, two volumes of 125 mil microliters to equal 250 in both the plus and the minus. In step three, you're going to place those uh, microtubules back in the foam float. You can leave the LB and the TS in there if you want. You're going to place that on ice to start and begin to chill those. In step four, you are going to select a colony, and you can see these circles in here. Each circle is a colony. One colony from each, uh, one colony, and add to each the plus p glow and you're going to select another colony and act to the, add to the minus plego. And you can see from this diagram that it indicates you're going to put it in there and you're going to spin it between your fingers to make sure you wash off all of the bacteria. Now, one colony is plenty. Bacteria replicate every 20 minutes. So over a 24-hour period of time, one bacteria is going to replicate and produce more than a million offspring. So a colony contains more than a million bacteria. So one is going to be plenty for a transformation experiment. Please don't take more than one because it actually may interfere with the process. So one colony is what it states. And believe me, that's plenty of bacteria. In step five, you are going to use uh, your eye and you're going to examine the p glow plasmid that's been produced by BioRad. It's in a clear vial. It'll be at my desk. Um, there'll be a UV light up there as well. So look at that to see if it glows. Shine the UV light on to see if it glows. And again, we're looking for a green fluorescent glow. And the UV light is more of a purplish color, so you definitely want to distinguish between green glowing and just a violet or purple color that's from the light itself. While you're at the desk, you are going to add the p -glow plasmid to your plus p -glow only. Notice that the other one, the minus p -glow, has a big X through it. Don't add to that because minus p -glow means it's not getting the plasmid. Only the plus p -glow. Both of them have gotten E. coli in step four, but only the plus p -glow is going to get the plasmid here. We are going to add a total of 10 microliters. And although this shows that we're going to use a loop, we're going to use the micropipetter. Now, 10 microliters in a micropipette tip is just a little bit. So you really have to make sure that you, you've identified and seen the liquid in the tip and that when you put it into the plus p -glow uh, microtubule that it actually left the tip and got into the liquid. Obviously, if you don't get the plasmid into the plus p glow, you have no chance of transforming any bacteria because you haven't introduced the, DN the new DNA that could transform the bacteria. So this is a really crucial step. So be careful and watch carefully and you should be fine on this one. In step seven, you're going to place it back in the rack Put it back on ice and pay attention when there are time uh, um, periods that you're going to leave it in somewhere. In this case, it says leave it on ice for 10 minutes. While it's on ice for those 10 minutes, you can begin working on the, um, the handout, the worksheet, that's going to be uh, answering questions about the lab and the bacteria and so forth. So do work on that while you're waiting the 10 minutes, but set your timer so you can keep track of that. Uh, while you're doing that, you can label your three plates. You're going to have three auger plates. One, uh, all three auger plates are going to contain LB. 
That LB is nutrients for the bacteria to live on and to use for energy. And one of them is only going to contain LB, nothing else. And you're going to label that minus PGLO. Uh, and then you're going to have two plates that contain LB and ampicillin. Ampicillin is an antibiotic. One of those you're going to label LB slash amp minus PGLO. The other you're going to label LB plus slash amp plus PGLO. Uh, and it's crucial. And you're going to write these on the bottom. You'll see this is written on the agar side of them. And you can write right in Sharpie. No need to use tape. We're not going to be saving these plates as it is. After the 10 minutes, nine, uh, in step nine, you're going to perform the heat shock. And this is really critical to the success of the experiment. Um, taking your sample from ice, so you have a cup of ice with your sample on it, carry that back to the hot water bath. Uh, you're going to place it in the hot water bath. It's set for 42 degrees for exactly 50 seconds. And you want to make sure you get as close to 50 as possible, not less, not more. 50 is what they've determined is the most successful in terms of timing. After that's 50 seconds, you want to take it out and immediately return it back to the ice. We want to shock the bacteria. So cold to hot, hot to cold is the way we're going to shock that. And what that's going to do is make the cell membrane more permeable to the plasmids so they can actually enter the bacteria. So this is a really critical and crucial step in the successful transformation of bacteria. Once it gets back on the ice, you've got another time limit here, so leave it in for two more minutes and wait and uh, to move on to step 10. In step 10, it says remove from the ice and place on your tabletop. Uh, you're then going to add the LB broth. That's in the other microtubule in your foam float, the one labeled LB. Remember, you had a TS for transformation solution and LB for Luria Britana broth. Add 250 microliters to each of these, minus and plus PGLO. Again, two additions of 125 microliters is equal to 250. So two additions to the plus, two additions to the minus, and then you're going to wait for 10 minutes. And while during that 10 minutes, you can work on the worksheets. Step number 11, you're, after that 10 minutes, you're going to take and you're going to use your finger and you're going to flick the tube to mix it. So mixing well is really important as well. We want to mix the plasmid. We want to mix the bacteria. We want to mix the, the broth, all of it together. So flicking is going to be super important, again, to get that mix. We don't want anything to settle and not get in contact with the other components that are necessary here. Um, and then you're going to add 100 microliters from the plus P glow to the plus PGLO LB amp. You'll need a new tip, and then you're going to add 100 microliters from the minus PGLO to the minus PGLO LB amp, and 100 microliters to the minus PGLO LB. So measure those out, add those carefully, uh, keep those sterile loops, you'll be all, or sterile tips, and you'll be all set. Uh, once you do that, you're going to use your loop to spread the bacteria all over the top and surface of the plate. Between each spreading that you'll do for these plates, be sure that you flame the loop and sterilize it so we're not transferring materials from one plate to another. Once those are completely spread out in step 12, you're going to stack the plates up. You're going to tape them together with a simple band of masking tape. You're going to label with the hour and your scientist initials. Um, you are going to place them in the incubator, which is against the wall by the window. And they need to be placed in upside down and look for the spot that has a label for your class hour. And then they will remain there until Monday so we can look at the results. Hopefully everything has gone well and you've paid close attention to the, um, the directions, the protocol. You've listened to one another. You've helped one another out. And hopefully you have great results on Monday. Uh, so good luck in this. And, and if you need to watch this again, you can. And then Monday we'll be looking for a plate like this. That contains glowing green colonies of bacteria. Good luck. We will uh, answer questions if you have any of those as well along the way.